just like that. All right, so the car is 2008 Evo 10 MR. We originally built it for a customer in Dallas. He sold the car to the new owner, Jake. Brought it to us from Louisiana. We built a 2.2 liter stroker with a ported head, oversized valves for the original owner. And it was on a Bolton GTX 35R on pump gas. Jake enjoyed that for a while. Just made the switch to 85. Right about that time, some other people were posting up new horsepower records. And Jake said, you know what? It'd be pretty cool if I had one of those. So then we called up the guys at Extreme Turbo Systems, bought a nice T4 twin scroll 6870 precision turbo kit, and upgraded the cams and valve springs to hold a little bit more RPM and the higher boost level, and got him his record. So, Dino Jet, well, Mustang Dino on our Dino. <clears throat> about 40 pounds by about I mean exactly 40 40.5 the car made 780 I believe corrected uncorrected was about the same because the weather was pretty close that day it was pretty warm out and a couple of days later we decided to take the car over to Eurocharge to use their dyno jet dyno which I'm not super familiar with all the corrections and everything like that after we posted the 933 pass everybody was like why is it SAE corrected so Dino Jet's pretty cool you can download their software on the website load the run in and uh, actually pull up whatever correction you want the SAE standard uncorrected etc so first pull on the Dino Jet SAE corrected it made 880 uh, it was only running about 39 pounds max it wasn't quite loaded up the same or the weather conditions were a little different that day whichever so uncorrected or standard correction on the 880 was like 895 or 898 something like that almost 900 but um, we decided to give it just a touch of boost get it back up to where it was roughly boost wise when it was on our dyno the week before and Got it back up to 40, one little touch of 41. We'll post the dyno graph in the video so everybody can see, I guess. But most of the time it's averaging 40 PSI. Um, SAE correction made like 933, and standard correction it did 958, I think, I believe. So both passes, regardless of correction factors, over 600 torque on a dyno jet. So that's about it so from there everybody thought that this car was my car when I posted up big ginormous numbers but this car actually makes more power than my car does which don't worry Jake we'll fix that so uh, now this car is actually like a full true street 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 car it's got full exhaust with mufflers it's still a little loud in here but uh at navigation, air conditioning, leather seats. What more can you ask for? It has stock BBS wheels on it. As you can tell from the video, we're driving around. It drives just fine. So, like I said, 6870, Kelfer 214C, 280 cams, ID2000s, Cosmic BMF fuel system stands for bad mother you get the rest of it uh, you know basically I don't know we'll call it a thousand thousand horsepower fuel system it idles it drives doesn't cam out doesn't do anything crazy so that's pulling up we're sitting here in traffic waiting on somebody to move it's probably the worst idea to go this way but yeah for the original owner, when it was on the 35R and pump gas, we did a Datsun Superstock. When that was 
I don't know how many years ago, quite a few years ago when we built the motor and the first trans. When Jake wanted to put it on E85, we were afraid the super stock wouldn't quite hold what we could do on the build motor, so we upgraded to a sportsman. And when he said he wanted to do what we're doing right now, we said, hey, we got some stuff we've been working on. It's been tested, it works pretty well. We're kind of curious to see what it worked like in a street car and we kind of want your input on it and uh, he was definitely down to try it so you know we've ran a custom cosmic where it's a new new line of clutches that we're about to publicly release called the, the drag series this is a drag 14 plate clutch so it has 14 frictions factory is eight frictions total most of your aftermarket stuff's going to be 10 frictions just recently, some guys were starting to put 12. We've been running 14 in my drag car for a while, um, but naturally that car doesn't see a lot of street time. It's just make a whole bunch of gobs of power on the dyno and go down the track and make a number. Um, so as far as getting some street testing, everything like that, I have it in a couple of our personal cars that we've had pretty good, good results with. So we told Jake, you know, this is what we got. You can kind of get a pre-release on it. And that's what's in the car right now. The, the drag 14. Uh, we do have some other options coming out with that as well. There's going to be a drag 12 and there's also not quite done with full-blown drivability testing. We're going to have another series called the Pro Drag which is going to be 12 and 14 disc as well. Uh, those are going to be just higher torque capacity handling than the regular drag series. But So this, this transmission has the drag 14 in it it has our cosmic full overhaul done to it, you know, going through upgrading the, the shift fork to repair it. Um, has our valve body upgrades, including pressure upgrades, and obviously new filters, new OEM Dia Queen, and top it off with a Dodson Sump, which is pretty much the best money any SSD owner can ever put in their transmission is a Sump. Um, today it's, I don't know how cold it is, 52 degrees, and we're running around in 180 trans temp. The car's been running for 20 minutes or so. You know, and it was stone cold when we started it. Normally it'd take, I don't know, 45 minutes to an hour to get up to where we're at right now without doing any kind of crazy driving. Uh, proven parts? We go to the track, we prove it, we sell. You know, we've, we've had the particular friction papers for like our HP series clutches and stuff like that. A lot of people don't realize like that's not just a, oh hey, here's a new friction paper, we put it in a trans and it works and this is great. No, that's, we go through multiple friction papers like the, the HP8 and HP10 clutches before we release those. I mean, I had to talk with Eric, but I think we were on our ninth or tenth revision of just what paper we were using to make the frictions and each time we do that that involves setting a clutch up having a car that'll make the power installing all that and then extensive dyno testing to to find the limits find the torque limits find the, the horsepower limits what temperature they like operating in overheating the clutch intentionally uh, figuring out what fails, does the paper burn, does it peel, does it come unglued, all kinds of stuff plays into that. Our HP series line of frictions before we were publicly selling those, those are the ones that on our website right now they have the black color texture to them. Um, I mean we, we've been working on that project for over two years so and that's you know nobody even really knew we were doing that but that was because we don't like just Oh yeah, this works, it holds some torque, it's an upgrade, have a nice day, pay me $2,000. Um, we definitely want to make sure that what we're selling is the best it can be, and we do extensive drivability testing with that too. So whether we use our own cars, or we have some very close clientele that we'll work with, that'll give us honest feedback, so we can make adjustments. So we've had friction papers when we work on the HP series that would grip too aggressively and the clutches would open up during cruise and you'd have this whoa, 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 you know, uh, which a couple other companies, friction papers do that too on the market. But, you know, that's, that's not reasonable unless you're 
selling a, a race only clutch most of the guys building these transmissions are they're daily driven or weekend driven they're not just drag strip only or road course only where it's either all in or nothing they're just cruising around like this which even our drag series clutches like what this car has in it right now you know it, it has its moments its jerkiness it's it is a little bit aggressive but with the proper tuning and the proper setup on the basket you know it's it's totally reasonable um you know we we can get it dialed back during the cruise moments and turned up during the horsepower moments when it when it needs to be aggressive it's aggressive and the rest of the time it's pretty reasonable well i mean we have the the drag clutches are kind of oriented more towards that like i said they have their their moments of I don't know how to describe it without making them sound bad, but misbehavior, where they're a little jerky and a little jumpy, and a lot of people don't like that. Um, so, hence we put the drag name behind them, so that we're not giving you any false promises. They are what they are, and we're going to deliver on that. Um, you know, if they were super streetable, I'd tell you they're everyday 14 plate, but they're. I mean, me personally, I can drive this every day. It, this is extremely smooth compared to my Evo 8 with Quartermaster clutch in it. It's a totally different world. But um, as far as the tuning side of it goes, I mean, this, this car is tuned using a Tefer V3 ROM. It's on flex fuel. Um, it's making gobs of power and not really running any kind of special fuel. We can shoot the ethanol content gauge in the part of the fuel uh, surge tank when we get back. But I think right now it's running 74, 76% ethanol. Yeah, same tank of gas when we tuned it and went to the dyno jet and all this other stuff. Um, actually gets pretty good gas mileage cruising around with the big ginormous turbo. But, um, you know, it's not doing anything crazy. This car is primarily used as a roll car. It's probably not going to go to the drag strip anytime soon. Um, if it would, we'd put the spark cut patch on it. But other than that, there are a lot of tuning strategies used that get this car to shift at this power level so it's not just oh put this crazy aggressive clutch in and let some bozo with a laptop go to work um, you definitely need to know what you're doing especially with the trans um, and different tactics to help with making the shift and on time and you know because obviously at the power level it just blows through the gear really really fast so you know we'll do a little sprint on the way back and show you what it's like but we do have some things that we're working on to change a little bit of the tuning strategies. I won't get into too much depth just because we kind of don't like talk about anything until it's done and proven. Um, not really the type of company. We never really have been to overhype something we're working on just because I don't like disappointment. So, you know, and everybody tests something and while you're testing, it's promising. And then if it doesn't work, you're just like, oh, I let you guys down. Sorry. but. We're not really like that. We never have been. We just, we release something and we get excited about it when it's tested and we know it works. And we can share that with our dealers and our customers and everything like that. So um, there are some small things coming. It's nothing major. You know, in the meantime, Tefra V3 with Flex Fuel. If you need Flex Fuel, is great. V2 will get anything done if you want dual maps or just single map. And the proper guy behind the keyboard, it really takes the right guy tuning the car um, you know a big big part of an advantage to buying transmissions and transmission parts and clutches and stuff like that is from from us is that we give you the tuning support you need to accomplish the goal of what you're trying to do with the car and why you're buying those parts it doesn't really matter what clutch you put in there who builds the transmission any of that stuff, it only takes, you know, one driver error input or one tuning error input to just totally wreck a clutch. Um, not even at, at big numbers or high power, you can have a, a you know, a four or 500 horsepower car with a 10 disc clutch that would just work flawlessly and go for days and just last forever with the, the right tune and everything behind it. But you put the guy that doesn't know how to turn the transmission up correctly or you have the owner that doesn't, isn't educated on putting it in S-Sport all the time, it runs it in normal mode. You know, one pull at incorrect pressures, and you can take a 10 disc, 
even on a stock turbo car and just ruin it. Um, so basically, you know, the benefit to purchasing all this stuff from us is that we're willing to work with your tuners, we're willing to look over your files to make sure that the trans is adjusted correctly. Um, you know, if the car's already been tuned before, you should just send that stuff to us and we take a look at it. We're not waiting on a tuner or somebody else to look at it. Eric's here, he's ready to go every day. You just send your map over. If we need to make adjustments, we do. It's no charge, it's free um, because we warranty our product and the only way I can warranty our product is to know that everything around our product is done correctly, specifically the tuning and everything like that. So it's a free service. It's a, you know, we might not be the cheapest in the industry, but we, we make sure that we can back our product by offering these services. And, you know, basically it's, I mean, it's not really free. It's just included with the price. So, um, kind of sets us apart from everybody else. Obviously at this horsepower level, they're not going to be like a stock turbo where it's like whoop, and it throws you in the seat every shift, but it clamps up, it goes in the next gear and keeps going. You don't get that, that drag into the next gear where it sounds like it's slipping, because most of them are, but um, yeah, we've, we've definitely, tuning tactics, clutch ca capacity, capabilities came a long ways in the last, in the last year. Feeling it gets a little loud in here. Uh, yeah, it's a lot nicer outside, <laughs> but in here.
I figure we'll take a few minutes, go over the dyno graphs from both the dyno jet at Eurocharge that we went to, posted up all those record numbers, and then also our dyno chart. Um, we can start off with our dyno chart right here, which if you look down at the min, I don't know if the camera can focus, but we could probably put a screenshot in there. You can see peak boost is right at 40 pounds. Um, car did corrected 782 horsepower, 497 torque. Um, this is on roughly E75, which is like 74, 76, but same tank of fuel through both dynos. Um, you know, we did on 1012, but you can see we we're running about 40 pounds. Like I said, 782, 497 torque. Yeah, go back over. We had Eurocharge send over the uh, DRF files. We downloaded, you know, WinPEP 7, which is the DynoJet software, so that we can actually open the runs and show you guys different stuff. Um, we did do two pulls on the car while we were there. Didn't need to do anything else because we did what we wanted to do. Uh, first pull, boost was a little bit shy from where we were at. Was only running about, you know, 38 and a half, 39 pounds. So we did do one flash revision and brought the boost back up to where it was, you know, targeting on our dyno. Um, so if we, we'll just zoom in a little bit here on, let's see just the graph so we can see it a little easier. And we can put the display max values. So in SAE correction, which you can see over here, um, which apparently not too many people use, but those are the numbers that we posted um, because we don't use it on jet, I'm not super familiar with it. SAE corrected. Um, 933 horsepower, 622 torque on the second pull, 880, 569 on the first. If we go over to what most people consider industry standard, so I've been told, again, I don't have a dyno jet, is using standard correction. Um, first pull was 898, 581 torque, 952, 635 torque. Um, take it for what it's worth, I don't really care. <laughs> We're not really a numbers kind of shop. Um, quite a few people have been questioning the correction factor being used, which other shops weren't posting, but um, sure, why not? We don't have anything to hide, so we'll do display conditions. You can see uh, first pat pull is 90 degrees in the dyno cell, second pull is 88, normal humidity levels, normal um, barometric pressure, and, and it shows what standard correction it's using there. If we switch back over to SAE, it shows what the SAE correction was for the day, and that's about it. Um, you know, that's where we got the numbers, that's what we're using. So you can see that the numbers that we normally post for our cars, you know, you know, like my rally art doing the record setting runs only makes like 730, 740 here, but obviously, you know, if we go brag about dyno jet numbers, it's significantly different, but we don't really care about dyno numbers we just want the cars to go super duper fast on the track and that's what we do